Hello everybody, and welcome to your first lesson on dynamic games. If you remember from the first part of the tutorial, when I first introduced a game to you, I introduced it in a very mathematically rigorous way. What I mean is I define players, actions, or strategies, and payoffs, and then we represented it in the normal form game. Unfortunately for extensive games, that full mathematical definition is very involved and has a lot of boilerplate to really convey a simple message. So what we're going to do is we're going to skip the full mathematical definition of a dynamic or sequential game and we're just going to show how to represent it in an extensive form game tree. The crucial difference between a simultaneous move game and an extensive form game is that some players will get to observe something before they act. Again, think for example uh, in checkers. Before player two moves, the second player to move, they see what player one did, the first player to move, and they can condition what they do based on what the other person does. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to first go through a simple example where there's only a one player, so it's not a game, it's just a one-shot optimization problem, and then we're going to extend it to games. So let's get to it. So first, we're going to do this very simple decision problem. And we're going to start with this thing called nature. N for nature. And what nature is going to do, you can think of this very close to nature, is it's going to say what the weather is. And the weather is either going to be snowy or it's going to be sunny. Okay? So you can think about this as overnight the, the weather develops and in the morning you look out your window. And what do you do? You want to figure out if you are going to wear a jacket or no jacket. And the same thing as if it's sunny. Okay, so what we see here, we can call this a decision tree. Each branch from nature represents one possible state of nature. It's either snowy or sunny. Each branch here represents one of your possible decisions. You can either wear your jacket or not wear your jacket. Finally, the last thing we can add in here is payoffs. So we can say if it's snowy and you wear a jacket, you get a payoff of two because you're warm. However, if it's snowy and you don't wear your jacket, you get a payoff of negative one because then you're cold. On the other hand, if it's sunny and you wear your jacket, you're going to be too hot, so you might get a payoff of negative three. But if it's sunny and you don't wear your jacket, you're going to be a good temperature, so you'll get a payoff of four. So of course I just made these payoffs up, but the, the intuition is clear. You always want to wear your jacket if it's snowy and no jacket if it's not sunny. I'm sorry, and no jacket if it is sunny. Okay, what is crucial about this is that you don't have to pick your action before you observe whether or not it's snowy or sunny. So what you can say is, if it's snowy, then I'll wear my jacket. If it's sunny, I won't wear my jacket. Okay? So this is, again, is a decision tree. Each branch here from nature represents a possible state of the world, snowy or sunny. Each branch here, I'll label this, you can be player one, player one, player one. We'll call these a decision node. At each decision node, you decide whether or not to wear a jacket or not wear a jacket. And then you get a payoff according to what nature was, snowy or sunny, and whether or not you wore a jacket or you didn't wear a jacket. Okay, so this is the notion of a sequential decision problem. Again, this is not a game yet. Nature is just the weather. It's not choosing anything. What we're going to see in the next video is how we can actually extend this to a game and also define strategies. What I hope to convince you in this video is that a strategy is an if statement. Again, what I mean by this is you don't have to say I'm going to wear a jacket or I'm not going to wear a jacket. That's not your strategy. Your strategy is if it's snowy, then I am going to wear a jacket. But if it's sunny, then I'm not going to wear a jacket. So now that we have that, I actually want to go through and list all of the player's possible strategies. So the first strategy, we'll call it S1. 
is if sunny, now you get to look at my artwork here. If sunny, then wear a jacket. But if it's snowy, don't wear a jacket. So this is one strategy because it specifies what you would do in each state of the world, either snowy or sunny. So what's another strategy? Strategy two, if it's sunny, wear a jacket. And if it's snowy, also wear a jacket. Another strategy, if it's sunny, don't wear a jacket. But if it's snowy, wear a jacket. And finally, the last strategy If it's sunny, don't wear a jacket. And if it's snowy, also don't wear a jacket. So what we see about this decision process is that even though the player will only take one action, either put on a jacket or don't put on a jacket, the strategy has to specify what it would do in each state of the world. And for this reason, there are actually four possible strategies for the decision maker, for player one, the person deciding whether or not to wear a jacket. It's important to realize this because when we get down to something called subgame perfect equilibrium in the next lesson or two, this listing of strategies as conditional if-then statements is very crucial. In the next lesson, we'll actually move on to modeling a game.